Okay, can you all hear me? Oh, that's okay, that's fine by me, because Les said he was going to put me on to mute. The root cause I will find later on. Okay? Right, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Derek Sharples and his team for Eurocopter, also everybody involved with Step Change, for letting us make the visit to Marignan, right? Which I can only describe in one word, awesome. All right? Okay, so I'm going to introduce myself. My name's Kenny Leggett. I'm a safety rep with Transocean, but I'm also a member of the G12, right? My colleague here is a little bit stage struck, right? So just bear with him, because he did whisper in my ear before he came up here. He says, the last time I was on the stage was the London Palladium. Now, that wasn't yesterday, so I will hand you over to him. Hello, everybody. My name's Pat Langan. I'm a safety rep on the Brent Alpha. Uh, as Kenny says, I'm a wee bit stage struck, but then again, with Kenny, for, us, for our main act, it's no easy to follow, eh? Uh, again, I would like to thank Derek, Giles, the whole uh, Eurocopter team for allowing us the uh, opportunity to visit their, their plant and see exactly what is going on. It's all very well used as seen slides and videos and these things seem all like corporate images. We actually were there, we experienced it, we saw the boys on the ground, the engineers, the technicians, the, the, everybody in the, in the factory and the, their commitment is there for everybody to see. I'd also th like to thank Steck Change for allowing us to go and uh, Alan for helping us with the uh, helicopter steering group. I'll pass you back to the main act. Right, okay. I think I have to press this green button. My technical knowledge is only off and on, so just bear with me, okay? Right, here we go. Okay, the first slide here is the assembly line. Okay, because obviously there you'll see the bullet points, so we'll go through them. Site cleanliness, calmness, working environment, workforce engagement, pride in our work, could talk to anybody. Well, basically, I was starstruck by, by how clean and how everything was in place and how friendly they were all looking. And obviously, they have a pride to work for Eurocopter, you know, and you don't get that in many industries these days, you know what I mean? You always get the people grumbling and moaning, but they are everywhere, right? But it was utterly amazing, you know <laughs> what I mean? I just looked around and I thought, yes, I could take a few tips back to the UK from here, you know? But they were all willing to come up and shake your hands and talk to you and everything, and the assembly line, it's, it's, it's utterly amazing going through all the stages and all the helicopters lined up here, you're thinking, where did all these helicopters come from? All in the different stages of being assembled, which to me was awesome. A lip part, maybe you say a yeah, few words. Yeah, as I see, as Kenny said, it was quite a, a, a sight to see. You see the the uh, gangway, the walkways, and the helicopters that takes you up to the road. We we were in the air talking to the individual technicians. I must admit. It was, a, it was quite uh, an eye-opener to see how many people could actually speak to in English. I mean, their French was uh, very, very poor, obviously. But these lads were genuinely trying. They'd, they'd picked up some English. Even if it was only a little English, they'd picked up and they were going to answer any question we put to them. Uh, they would take time out with us. It, it, the area w was well laid out, well organised. Uh, and it really did fill your confidence to see exactly how it was uh, achieved. Okay, Ken. Okay, we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, here we are, Rotar and Transmission Excellence Centre. Obviously, Derek and Alan have already spoke about that, because basically, I'm not technically minded, but I was blown away with what I saw. So basically, you'll see the bullet points here, blank material, cutting off gear teeth, bevel shaft assembly, shaft alignment, check and validation, vacuum electron beam welding, MPI and ultrasonic non-destructive testing. Well, the way about it, that's what a lot of people in the offshore industry thought it was just with a welding rod, stig or dig, <laughs> in you go, weld it up, throw it into the helicopter. But there's a lot more to it to that, it's very intricate. As you can see from the photograph and the, the guy sitting there with the beveled teeth and that, and then it's ready to go in for the electron welding. Well, it just moves along this conveyor and then it goes and this door closes. And they extract all the air from the inside, so there's no air in there. And then you'll see him and he sits there just like a little pen thing and a little computer there, getting ready for the weld to start, where there's four 
little wells first and then it'll go and do the whole circumference. It's, it's really amazing to see how intricate it is and a lot of work and effort that's going in in the, the making of a helicopter. Right, I'll hand you over to my yeah, lovely no, colleague here. Everything that Kenny said, exactly. I mean, the, the, the thing that struck me most was the expertise and I mean, it's well above our, our knowledge to look at this thing. We were just uh, ordinary workers going out in a factory and seen the engineering that I've never experienced before uh, by men that were totally competent at what they were doing, uh, first class. We, we could even go around the factory and look at uh, materials that had been prepared. They were boxed up, they were ready to go. We were able to go and ask, listen, is this, what shaft is this one? Is this the, 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 the Mark II? Is this Mark I? Uh, what's the next stage? Who does this? Uh, and every, uh, uh, they were, everything was transparent and clear to us. They showed us everything that went on. They, and as I say, the, their, their commitment and their, their expertise in what they did was, was a, a joy to behold, really. Right, we'll go on to the next slide. Okay, here we go with the war room. Well, I was really amazed in there, because you know why? I looked around for Winston Churchill, but he was nowhere to be seen. But Right? So we'll go through the, the bullet points of the war room, then you have nerve centre of investigation, extensive and exhaustive root cause, analysis approach, multiple investigation branches, each branch led and owned by expert, clear demonstration of number one priority Eurocopter. What amazed me was they have a dedicated team in there, and they're dedicated solely to finding out the root cause of the problem with the, the shaft. And they're all in there, and as you can see by the, the wall charts and all the, the post notes, they're all round, they're all over in that room. And they're all sharing information with one another. It's just like, I don't know if a lot of you know about Kelvin Topset for accident investigation. But it's based on the same ideas that you post, post notes till you get down and you find out the root cause. But they have the same principle in there. The amount of work and effort and hours they're putting in to find out the cause of this is, is, is utterly amazing, honestly it is. So I'll hand you over yeah. to Pat here. Uh, 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 we've, we've had the presentation for Gilles about mm. root cause analysis, about hums, about all the aspects of the problems that they're investigating. Uh, and for, I mean, it's hard to take in. You're sitting there with an ordinary punter and there's so much technical detail, so much them themselves will tell you it's uh, such a complicated analysis process. But when you go into the, the Marine Command Centre, or War Room as they would call it, you, you see where every area is covered, every possible problem, every possible cause has, has been looked into, drilled down through and checked. Uh, there's just every, every particular section of that, you see these spreadsheets. Well, there's an individual engineer responsible for all that with a team working with them and nothing is overlooked. Uh, you see the different coloured post-its, I mean, it's meticulous. And uh, that certainly felt like they gave us a lot of confidence. It was, it was quite a, a, well, a, a, a great display, really. OK, we'll move on to the next slide. OK, visit of the EC225 test campaign. OK, we'll run through the bullet points here. Multiple external test conditions replicating North Sea environment and conditions. Because as you know, the North Sea is one of the harshest environments to work in the world. I know that. I'm an ex-fisherman, so I know a bit rough and tough, right? Special tools, instrumentation, and software developed for conduct tests. Crack inspection at microscopic level, strength and integrity, testing of blanks and real components. Well, this to me, when we went round to that area, just to see how the testing of the gearbox is done, as Alan explained in more technical detail than I can, was just out of this world, right? Obviously, we never got to see the testing of it because you have to close the door because you can never start it up with the doors open and bust your eardrums, I presume, you know? But the detail and everything that's put in there for the testing of the gearboxes and everything, it's just like meticulous. It's second to none, you know? The, the amount of hours and effort that goes in there. And if you think the amount of helicopters they have produced worldwide, that's a lot of man hours in there working and everything. And I'll hand you over to Pat. Uh, what impressed me was the, 
the, the video, we've all seen corporate videos, we've all seen companies producing videos that make everything look great and rosy. Well, the people, some of the people you saw in the test area, for example, in the test and control room, we spoke to those people. Those people weren't actors, they were genuine people doing a job. So there was, everything was transparent and everything was open. The, uh, again, it was the theme of the whole visit, that if we had any questions, if there was anything we were unsure of, obviously we're not technical, we can only see where, where they're going and the reason behind what they're going for, but uh, it was all there for us to see, and everyone for the engineer, as I say, to the technician that was assisting the, the engineer was open and transparent with us and everything they said. You okay, son? No, you go, son. Did I drink a water? No, no you That's go. okay. Right, we'll go on to the next slide. Okay, now here we go. Visit of the hams room. Okay, bullet points, real boffins, monitor the hams data coming in from around the world on a real-time basis, developing ruggedized laptop to support download of hams data offshore, developing an in-flight display of hams threshold alarm. Well, when I first went offshore and somebody says to me, hams, I just thought that was when you heard a tune, didn't it? You hum, you know? But when you walk into this room, the hams room, they're all sitting there and they're all monitoring data from every helicopter flying in any part of the world. Now it's hard to um, think of, is it? If you think the amount of helicopters, Eurocopter built, and they're all flying in different sectors of the world and they are monitoring the hams data, and they're all sitting there. It's utterly amazing. I was just, I was taken aback in there. It was slightly warm in there, right? But I did say the next time I come over, I'm bringing in a couple of tomato plants. Right, I'll hand you over yeah, to Park. Yeah, it's, it's, it was very warm in there. Yeah. It was a hectic visit. We started at half eight in the morning. I left the tail at eight o'clock, and we didn't get finished at six o'clock. And we never stopped, except for lunch, all the time we were there. In fact, we'd actually asked them to stop and get us some water. It was uh, so intensive. The visit was so intensive. And these lads there, as Kenny says, it's amazing to see a, a world screen up and a light real time uh, monitoring all these things. And, and not, not, they weren't just sitting in their laurels. They're, they're talking about new and more advanced uh, monitoring systems. Again, as Kenny said, it's way bit above us. But you see that the thing's always moving forward. There's, uh, it's there and it's, it's developing all the time. Okay, we want the next slide. Okay, airframe and dynamic component repair center. Okay, service center equipment coming in and being repaired back to as new condition. Traceability of tools via RFID, no aircraft gets signed off if tool not in toolbox. RAF refurb 14 aircraft currently with EC. Okay, this is where the, the service centre, where they're refurbing helicopters from all over the world. It's utterly amazing, they're in there. And a lot of them to do with the military and everything. And as for that toolbox, well, that is utterly amazing, because I think we should get some of them offshore, and they wouldn't have to spend so much money looking for tools. Because <laughs> basically the way that works, the guy has a car and he just scans it like a barcode, takes out the tools, and away he goes. But his name comes up in that screen saying that he's took out that tools and he's responsibility for them you know till they go back in there and then it's closed so you're not leaving tools lying around and they're on the aircraft you know like offshore and that they're just left anywhere are they you know but it's it's utterly amazing and as for that RAF refurb well they have 14 helicopters in there at the moment from Afghanistan and I think Derek they're doing 28 and they're stripping them all down to the bare bones and rebuilding them, right? My theory is, the MOD are in a bad way, right? It doesn't reflect good in the economy in the UK. So maybe after this is finished today, we could have a whip round and send the money to the MOD, telling them we really care for them, right? But it's utterly amazing in there when you see all that helicopter. And if you're into boys' toys, well, they're all there for you. You know what I mean? Everything from attack helicopters to little ones scooting around when you go to Royal Ascot and all the little things, Henley and Thames and all that stuff. You know what I mean? They're all there. It's utterly amazing. So I'll hand you over to my yeah, colleague here. Yeah. The, the, the thing that struck me about that, the whole thing, was the professionalism. Again, the enthusiasm, 
The uh, man in charge of the area, uh, very good English, heavily accented in French, but uh, that didn't stop him. He wanted to show you everything. He wanted to let you know that every piece of work, everything's documented, verified, audited, checked out. Uh, the, whole s the whole system is professional in its, its essence. And it was a, again, a confidence building uh, visit to see just how much care and attention was being taken. That, that's where that struck me in that area anyway. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the last slide. So we've overstayed our welcome, I think, but never mind. I hope you were entertained. And by the way, my fee's more than his fee, so <laughs> I'll be quite happy later on today. So I'd like to thank you all for your kind attention and that. Okay? Thank you very much.